right, back to chapter 4.1, complex numbers. I'm going to do some problems from the next section. So the instructions for problems 23 to 30 in your book on this page, page 319, indicate you're supposed to perform the operation and write the result in standard form. So let's start with number 23. So that's what we have, uh, 5 plus i, quantity 5 plus i, plus the quantity 2 plus 3i. As I mentioned before, all of the, uh, the general rules for addition multiplication are going to work the same using complex numbers. Uh, the i does uh, can't just be, um, it's not a like term to a constant that doesn't have an i, but we can group these things um, by, by stuff we know. So we have 5 plus 2. And we have an i plus 3i. And we can put parentheses around these if we want. But I've just ordered the values as we would. Uh, again, the associative property is going to work. Commutative property is going to work. So all of this is totally legal. So the 5 plus 2 comes out to 7. And 1i plus 3i is 4i. You can almost think of it as an x. It's not an x, but you can think of it as, as such when you're combining things. So that is our standard form. Our a would be 7 and our b would be 4. So 7 plus 4i. Let's choose a different one. Let's go down and do one. Uh, these are all addition or subtraction, so I'm going to do number 29, which is a subtraction. So we start with uh, 13i, and we subtract the quantity 14 minus 7i. All right, so uh, the distributive property works, and so the, the, the minus sign has to be distributed both to the 14 as well as the negative 7. So we have 13i minus 14 plus 7i because the two uh, negatives become a positive. So we have 13i and 7i, which give us 20i. I'm going to write them on the right-hand side because I'm going to put them in order as well. And then we have negative 14. So this is a positive 20i. We have negative 14, and we've combined like terms, and we have it in standard form. So that's how you perform that uh, action. Let's do a couple of them in multiplication as well. So the next group, uh, they all appear to be um, multiplication of some sort. So we'll do a couple of those. So let's scroll down a little bit. And let's just do the, uh, let's do 33. That one's not too bad. So 12i. Multiplied by the quantity of 1 plus 9, excuse me, 1 minus 9i. All right, so we're going to distribute the entire 12i. 12i times 1 gives us 12i. 12i times negative 9i is going to be uh, negative 12 times 9i squared. Okay. All right, so 12 times 9 is 108, so we're left with 12i minus 108, but i squared is negative 1 from the previous video there. So we have a negative 108 times a negative 1, which gives us positive 108. So we have 108 plus 12i when written in standard form. All right, let's grab another one of those. Well, let's do 35. All 
right, so this one is root two plus three i times root two minus three i. Uh, for those of you who uh, have recognized this, it is in a conjugate form. So yeah, oftentimes we're trying to remove the, the square root. Uh, so we multiply by you know something minus the square root and something times that square root. Uh, here we're trying to remove the imaginary number or Right now, we're just going to do the multiplication, but as for a conjugate, we would be trying to remove the negative number or the imaginary number, in which case the conjugate of something plus 3i is that same th something minus 3i. At any rate, let's do the FOIL. Uh, root 2 times, uh, I'll break it up into in the four parts. So root 2 times root 2 uh, minus 3i root 2 plus 3i root 2, and then we have a minus 9i squared when we multiply 3i times negative 3i. Well, these two things add up to 0. Root 2 times root 2 is just 4. So we have 4 minus 9, but i squared turns into negative 1. So that's actually 4 plus 9, which gives us 13. This is an idea of how to put things in a standard form, deal with some addition, multiplication, combining like terms, issues with imaginary numbers. And that's video two.